Hi, this is the test bed we use with AeroDelph. It's used to simulate the powertrain and we'll be testing coming weeks with our test campaign. We'll do a full load test and we'll do some other endurance tests and interval tests. This will simulate how the fuel cell system will work in the actual aircraft. In the system, we have several loops. We have the anode loop, here is where the hydrogen comes in. We have the cathode loop, the air side of the fuel cell stack. We have cooling loops to dissipate the heat. And then we also go to the conversion and distribution side of things. This will all be attached to a motor, electrical motor and a propeller to drive the aircraft forward. The electronic system is responsible for distributing and converting the power. After the power has been produced by the fuel cell, it goes into the power distribution unit, which goes into the junction box and finally into the motor powering the propeller. This is actually a simplified version of our electronic system. Right now we have batteries powering the compressor, which ensures that the cathode loop has air at the sufficient pressure. Over the coming months, we will be implementing new changes and upgrades to our system, uh, including components and wiring, to accurately simulate our actual powertrain for the full-scale aircraft. All right, so there's two main loops uh, in our system, our fuel cell system, the anode loop and the cathode loop. Uh, I'll first explain the cathode loop, that's where the air comes in. So down here, in this big um, black cylinder, there is uh, an air intake and it gets filtered here. So um, particles um, uh, get filtered out of the air. Then it goes up to the compressor where the air gets compressed. Um, which makes it really hot, uh, which is why it then gets cooled over here in the intercooler. Um, and then before it goes into the fuel cell, um, the air has to reach a certain humidity, um, which is what's yeah. done in the humidifier down here. Um, after that, it enters the fuel cell. So once it goes, once it's out of the humidifier, it goes underneath uh, here and enters this pod. And on these two white pods is where the fuel cell stack will be mounted. Um, and so that's how the air gets uh, into the fuel cell. Uh, the other side, other loop is the anode loop, which is the hydrogen. Uh, the hydrogen comes in through here uh, at around 10 bars where it gets um, lowered in pressure through using this pressure regulator. Um, then it goes all the way over here to a water separator. Uh, you don't want any water to come into the uh, fuel cell through the anode loop, so any water falls down and the clear hydrogen then enters this pod through this pipe uh, into the fuel cell as well. Uh, once it comes out, again, you have a water separator. Um, however, you don't want to get rid of any excess hydrogen, so you uh, recirculate it using this uh, recirculation pump, which then enters back into the original water separator. All right, so now that the two main loops have been explained, the anode and the cathode, we'll see how that comes together in the fuel cell. So this is a simple schematic of the fuel cell. On the left, we have the anode again, on the right, the cathode. On the anode, the hydrogen comes in. Um, it then gets broken up by a catalyst into um, hydrogen ions and uh, electrons. Um, in the middle, there's a membrane which only lets through the hydrogen ions, but not the electrons. Um, so instead, the electrons are forced uh, up through a cable, um, which is essentially your current, which will um, power, uh, for example, a light bulb, or in our case, a motor. Um, and then it comes back on the cathode side, where the um, hydrogen ions, the electrons, and then oxygen come together to form uh, water. Um, on the other side, on the anode, you also have excess hydrogen that uh, leaves your system through uh, um, here. Um, but that's the basic principle of how a fuel cell uh